Welcome. My name is Charles Tay. I pastor Brookport Church of God. I want to say thank you for joining us online. I recently read that there are two basic human needs the soul has. First of all, connection with our Heavenly Father. Second, connection with others. We are wired for community. We would love to connect with you. You can email us at prayer at brookportcog.com and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for joining us. We trust you will enjoy our service. Praise the Lord, guys. It is good to be in the Lord's house today. It is. Amen. Uh, today fits in perfectly as an illustration of a little bit of what my message about <laughs> this morning. Uh, but we are so grateful you're here. Welcome those that are joining us online. And let uh, every one of you need to know you're important. You're vital to us. And again, uh, in spite of everything that's happened this morning with the weather and stuff, we're so grateful that you have joined us today. Amen. We so appreciate that. Uh, to God be the glory. Amen. I'm going to ask this morning if Phil and Atley would help me receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Uh, faithful stewards of all that the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good to us. Amen. Would you join with me in prayer today? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the gift of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. It's where our faith starts, and that's where we must start this morning, focusing on Christ, our Savior, the love shown us through his sacrifice. It's through him that we have life and have it more abundantly. Pray your blessing upon this day. Pray your blessing upon the, those that give and their tithe and offering today, God. Just let this day be a, be a day that you are glorified, that you are honored in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power Fighting our battles Every knee will bow before you Our God is a lamb the Lamb that was slain For the sin of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, 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 oh. So open up the gates Make way for the King of Kings Our God who calls the same Is here to set the captives free But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battles Every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb.
Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Well, what a day that'll be. Every knee, every tongue. It's what the Bible tells us. is going to confess He's Lord. Amen? Praise God. Y'all can be seated for a moment. Guys, if you want to find your seat, there's some over here. And you want to sit down for a moment. Uh... I do want to, I can't go through this weekend and not at least draw our attention to what this weekend is about. Uh, First of all, we're here on Sunday. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ ultimately. But also, guys, the United States of America wouldn't be enjoying the freedoms that we continue to enjoy without the sacrifice of those that have served in our military amen Amen. so we've got a a video first of all i want to share with you just to kind of remind us but and i'll have a few statements and i would like for us to have prayer would you please watch God, we'll not forget. We've got to make sure each generation coming up is made aware of the sacrifice and the fight. As I want to remind you, Memorial Day is a time each year when we pause to remember those who laid down their lives for family, friends, and freedom. One week after the Pearl Harbor attack, President Franklin D. Roosevelt said, Those who long enjoy such privileges that we enjoy forget in time that others have died to win them. We will remember. 
reminds us that freedom is never really free. It's almost always bought with the blood of patriots. Today we recognize the magnitude of their sacrifice. Today we remember their unselfish service. We honor their, the memory of their lives. Those brave men and women who died in battle protecting our liberties. Those who have shed their blood across the world on many different battlefields would cry out to us today. Remember your freedom cost. It costs the precious blood of precious people who were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice that you may live freely. This weekend, tomorrow especially, is set aside to remember and honor those who died serving our country. Those who did not get to take off their own uniform. You've always heard you can't put a price on a human life. Truth is, you can't. But on the other hand, we determine the value to us of the price paid by others for our value. And they have great value to me. Today is a somber moment. I understand that. We're here to praise the Lord. But how many also under agree, agree and understand we need to be reminded? We can't take our liberties and freedoms for granted. Men and women have fought the battles and gave their lives. Uh, earlier, Lavelle was telling me about your uncle that served in part of World War II and was there Normandy and others and talking about how horrific it really, really was. But we continue to enjoy our freedoms today because of their ultimate sacrifice. Now, I know this isn't Veterans Day, but I always like to have those that have served our military, whatever uh, area it was, those that are here, and if you've served in the military, would you stand for just a moment and let us uh, recognize you today, please? Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Not only reflecting, but let's also today, please, let's pray for the men and women that are presently serving in our military forces. Heavenly Father, today, as we look back over the lives of men and women, many, we, we don't even know their names, God. But we continue to enjoy the freedoms that they fought for. We're here today in this church enjoying religious freedom. As those who have fought and sacrificed their lives. And God, we thank you today for these that are in our service. That have served in our military. Those that have been in the army and. We have some that are maybe not able to be here today that served in the Navy, Navy, the Marine Corps, God. Others that we know are part of our family, again, that are unable to be here in the Air Force and the uh, Coast Guard. God, we just thank you for each and every one of them. Thank you for the sacrifices made. Thank you for these that remind us of the effort, of the sacrifice, of the freedoms that we continue to enjoy. We pray your blessing upon those that are presently serving our military forces, God. Keep your hand upon them. Again, day, today, Lord, we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for allowing us that for a moment. Would you again stand with us? Let's Worship the Lord today. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run. 
The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. King of my heart, be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song, you are good. Dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. A wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take. To free us all from sin and grace A perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming Devil, you're done, you better start running. Friday's good, cause Sunday's coming. So he let those soldiers take him in. 
as his friend betrayed him with a kiss. And there before the mocking crowd, like a lamb to the slaughter didn't make a sound. Then he carried that cross to Calvary, and he shed his blood to set us free. As the nails went in and the sky went dark, the redemption of the world was on his heart. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. Don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming. Devil, you're done, you better start running. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. Then he breathed his last and bowed his head. The Son of God and man was dead. With bloody hands, tears on their face, they laid him down inside that grave. But that wasn't the end. That wasn't the end. That wasn't the end. Let me tell you what happened next. The women came before the dawn to find that stone already gone. When they looked inside, the angel said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's alive, he's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Give him praise, lift him high. Hallelujah, he's alive. He's alive, he's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Give him praise, lift him high. Hallelujah, he's alive. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. But don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming. Devil, you're done, you better start running. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. And don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming. Devil, you're done, you better start running. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. Now Jesus reigns upon the throne. All heaven sings to him alone. We watch and wait like a bride for a groom. Oh, church, arise. He's coming soon. This morning, praise God. I've got a lot of stuff that I've added that won't be on the slides, but uh, I just want to obey God today. I want to obey the Lord. Uh, some of you may wonder, maybe you've never wondered, where the inspiration for my sermons come from, my messages come from. Uh, they come from many different avenues a lot of times. I uh, was listening to a preacher the other day, and a gentleman in his church just had both knees replaced at the same time. And uh, after a period of time, they come in, and there's physical therapy, and they expect you to get up and start walking. 
And uh, he was sharing about that he'd been praying and he had no idea what he was going to be preaching on Sunday morning. And this is Saturday. He'd been praying. He'd been seeking God. He just could not get clear on what direction the Lord wanted him to go on that Sunday morning. But he knew he needed to go visit this gentleman in his congregation. And so he walked in the room and uh, the pastor asked him, how are you doing? He said, I'm hurting. He said, they just had me up. They told me I had to walk. And so they got him up, got him out of bed and he said, throw me back on that bed. I'm hurting so bad, just put me back down. I got to lay back down. Nope. And nudged him along. Kept him moving. Took a step or two and stopped. And he said, yeah, help me, get me back on that bed. I've got to get back on that bed. Just, I'm hurting so bad. And he got up and nudged him again. He kept moving forward. And... Uh, he said, Pastor, I begged and begged for them, but they made me walk so far and do so much. He wanted to stop so bad. And he said, the man looked at him and said, Pastor, the physical therapist looked at me and said, sometimes it hurts to heal. Guys, if that's not applicable, it hurts to heal at times. Not always easy to go through that. And so the pastor got his pen out, a piece of paper out, and wrote, it hurts to heal. The man looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, I just got my Sunday morning message. <laughs> that inspiration. It comes from different sources. The insp I'm telling you guys, I don't just get up here to say something. I want something to say. Last Monday, my wife asked me, well, what's your sermon title next week? I said, I just got through this week. <laughs> I just got through this Sunday. And uh, I said, give me a little while. Let me, let me get seek God. Let me and I, I just bought this book, and I told you about it. It's by Lauren and Michael McAfee. It's entitled Beyond Our Control. Beyond Our Control. And I took, and I just thought, well, I'm going to read this for a moment. Let me, can I just do this today? Can, is it okay if I just share a, a moment? I'm, I guess I'm way too relaxed this morning. We all get stuck and feel discouraged from time to time in our attempts to control the uncontrollable, which can be debilitating. Now, as Lauren begins to write her section of this book, it's written by her and her husband, Michael. She said, I I'm guessing that while you may be you may have always known that life comes with its share of hardships. It's the form those hardships take that has felt totally shocking to you. You thought you'd struggle some, but did you really have to struggle like this? You thought you'd experience some setbacks. But was it necessary to be kicked to the curb? I don't know about you guys, but I, I can relate to that. I get that. That's life. And this is what I want, and I'm going to lay the book aside. But this is what she said. We've come to understand that even in the, mo the most painful of circumstances... We can experience rich intimacy with God. Praise God. Even in the most painful of... I want you to get that. Even in the most difficult of circumstances, we can experience rich intimacy with God. And I'm going to tell you guys, that was the inspiration for my message this morning. Last week, in the message, 
by my spirit. I referred, ref, uh, referenced Elijah, where Elijah had his showdown on Mount Carmel and stood against the prophets of Baal. And whoever answered by fire would be recognized as God. So the prophets of Baal took their turn and took their time. Did all that they could think to do. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. Now I don't have this on the screen, but give me just a moment. In the previous, I'm going to read from 1 Kings 19, but I want to go back for a moment in 1 Kings chapter 18. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it known, be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Approximately 63 words, depending on what version of the Bible you read. King James Version, it is 63 word prayer that Elijah directed to God. And in verse 38 of 1 Kings 18, it says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood and the stones and the dust, licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. What a picture of the revelation of God's authority and God's power. How many understand though, not all of life is lived on the mountain in that kind of presence. Because just in the Bible, I'm going to refer to it like this, just a few verses later, let's look at this same man that had experienced such a tremendous victory. We'll put this, we're going to talk to you today about faith in time of crisis. Faith in time of crisis. Now let's look to the word of God today as we find ourselves in the circumstance of this past. And circumstance may be a little different, but we find ourselves in an occasion like this from time to time. 1 Kings 19, beginning to read at the uh, first verse. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets, the prophets of Baal, with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as one of them. Uh, of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. This is a man that had just experienced the magnitude of God's power in such a dynamic and real way. And now it says he gets up and he begins to run for his life. And he went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And said, it's enough now. Lord, take my life. The pendulum of his life is swinging. The roller coaster had been climbing, but now it's rushing down. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Now, to me, this is a powerful passage. It's a passage that speaks to the heart of human struggle. The depths of despair, the hope that is found in God alone. 
It's a passage that reminds us that even the prophets of old, the giants of faith that we read and, and, and look to, draw strength from, have moments of fear. Moments when they felt overwhelmed by the circumstances of life. You don't have to nod your head or show your hand, but I'm going to raise my hand right now. Have I ever been there? Yes. Overwhelmed by life. Yes. I've been there. Now the first point I want us to see today is this. Confronting crisis with Christ. Confronting crisis with Christ. Listen, again, we all, whether you acknowledge it or not, you can try to hide it all you want, but all of us face crises in our lives. Moments when we feel overwhelmed. Moments when we're doing our best to navigate life. Moments when we feel stuck. Question as to how can we move forward from here. Moments. When we feel like Elijah under the broom tree. How do we confront these crises? How do we find hope in the midst of despair? How do we navigate those seasons when we feel like we're hiding from life? Amen. I just want to tell you. We find our way in Christ our rock and our redeemer. Now, our second point that we'll try to get to today, I don't know how far I'll go today. The second point I want to talk about is this, claiming our Christ-given identity. Guys, that's so big. Claiming our Christ-given. So many of the circumstances that we experience in life generate or create a crisis in our identity. Your identity, listen, your identity is not found in where you are. Your identity travels with you. I am in Christ, Christ is in me. There's my identity. And that travels with me. Whether I'm on the mountaintop of victory or if I am in the valley of despair, that identity travels with me. Amen. Whether I am out there proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, seeing souls saved, or like the Apostle Paul, one minute they're out there preaching and seeing people delivered and healed and saved and all those things. Next thing you know, they find themselves locked up in a prison jail cell. My identity travels with me. My circumstances do not rob me of my identity in Christ. Look, when we are in Christ, we are not defined by our circumstances. We are not defined by our failures. Well, somebody needs to say praise God there. Thank God I am not defined by my failures. Not defined by the choices of doubt and fear. We're defined by Christ. We're defined by His love, by His sacrifice, by His victory over sin and death. That's my identity. And the third point, and I doubt that we'll get there today. Courage in Christ amidst crisis. Even in the midst of crisis, we can have courage. Not because of our own strength and wisdom, but because of Christ who strengthens us. Remember again the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well again, Harvey, the word of God not only spoke then, it continues to speak day. And so I can put myself into that passage. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody needs to, I can do all things through Christ. Somebody needs to declare that over your life. I can, Pastor. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. God gives us the wisdom to navigate life. He walks with us through every trial. Somebody say, praise the Lord. 
You know, I've been reading some quotes by Charles Spurgeon. I've shared them with you. You may get exhausted from that, but there are two, Ryan, that have just been, I've been almost every day. One of them has a little humor, I believe, in it, but by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. I like that. Perseverance. Just keep hanging in there. Keep moving forward. I like that. But he also said, I have learned to kiss the wave that throws me against the rock of ages. I almost reminded every time I think of that quote, what was meant for evil, God meant it for good. You meant his brothers and everybody else that Joseph encountered meant to take him out. But all that wave did is throw him against the rock of ages and elevate him into second command and allow him the opportunity to restore relationship with his family. Am I okay today? Amen. Friends, let us learn that lesson. Let's kiss the wave that throws us against the rock of it. Let's not despise it. Let's not deny it. Let's embrace it. Because it's throwing me closer to the Lord God Almighty. In every circumstance, I can have that moment of intimacy with God. Oh, hallelujah. That's our hope. That's our courage. That's our identity. Amen. Now, I'll only preach as, as far into this as, as I can today. But I want to go back and talk about this. I want to go a little bit deeper into these points today. Again, the first one is confronting crisis with Christ. Let's reflect on that passage we read. To me, when I read 1 Kings 19 and those first four verses, that's a powerful section in Scripture. Aren't you glad that God pulls the curtain back and lets us see into the lives of great men and women of God and just see a little bit where we can understand we're still, I'm saved by grace, yes, but I'm still a human. Amen. It's a passage that speaks to the heart of human struggle. The depths of despair. The hope that's found in God. We're not done there. That's not where the story stops. And you can read later the continuation of it. But it's a passage that reminds us that even the prophets of old, the giants of faith, had moments of fear. Moments when they felt overwhelmed by their circumstances. Now let's think about Elijah for a moment. He's a man of God. He's a prophet. He spoke God's truth to a world that didn't want to hear it. He stood up to kings and queens. God performed miracles through him. And yet, he, he, here he is, running for his life, hiding in the wilderness, praying, let me die. Why? Because he's human. He's afraid. He felt alone. He felt like he'd failed. But here's the thing, and I want you to get this. Elijah was not alone. Even in those moments of despair, when you feel like giving up, quitting, shutting down on life, I want you to, even when you can't feel Him, even when you can't see Him, He is there. You're never alone. <laughs> Praise God. You're not alone. God was with Him. God heard His prayer. And I want to tell you something. God wasn't intimidated by His prayer. God saw his pain. God knew his heart. God had a plan. Can somebody say praise God? Now as we look at him, let's also think about our own lives. We all face crises, as I've already said. Moments where we feel overwhelmed. Moments where we feel like we can't go on. Moments when we feel like we're all alone. We have moments where we feel like Elijah, again, under that broom tree. But here's the thing. We're not alone. We're not alone. God is with us. God is for us. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. 
God hears our prayers. God sees our pain. God knows our heart. God has a plan for us. Just like Elijah, God's got a plan for us. I want you to get a hold of this today, guys. And I found this out. Sometimes I need the wave of adversity to come against me simply for me to learn the life lessons I need to learn. Do you hear me? Sometimes I've got to go through the harsh reality of life simply so that I can understand the true character of God. Amen. He's our Lord. He's our foundation. I want you to hear me. God's our liberator. He's the one. He's the one that gives us hope in the midst of despair. He's the one that gives us strength in the midst of weakness. He gives us peace in the midst of turmoil. In Christ, we find strength to stand up to our fears. In Christ, we find hope to keep going even when everything seems to be lost. But how do we do this? I want you to hear me. I've heard preachers preach about this passage, Ryan, through the years. And some of them became kind of critical of Elijah. We don't need to be critical of Elijah. Each one of us are human. We're not alone. Even when it feels like it and looks like it. And everything seems lost. So how do we do this? How do we con confront our crises with Christ? It starts with prayer. Look, even as messed up as Elijah was right here emotionally and mentally, he was in a dark place right here. He's in a bad place. Let me die, God. Let me die. He's in a bad place. But what's he do? He prays. He prays. That's, that's so big. He prays. And I want you to know God's never intimidated by your prayers. Whatever they may sound like. Man, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this house right now. Amen. It starts with prayer. It starts with turning to God in our moments of despair. With pouring out our hearts to Him. With trusting in His love. There it is, guys. Trust His love. Trust His mercy. Trust His grace. Amen. Amen. Remember again, and I, I, I'm sorry for referring to this, but it's just my personal experience that, that I want to share for a moment. And I remember it's been over a decade now. I can't believe that it's been that long. been over a decade now since I had my last major surgery. I say praise God for that. And that last major surgery was in Mayo Clinic. Well, they've got these things in hospitals that are called visiting hours. And there were times that my wife would sit with me and stay with me. And whenever I'd had one of those, there was a period of time that almost every year or every other year, I was having another surgery. That's how often I was going through this. Until that one in Mayo Clinic. And I thank God opened that door because people around here thought they had never even seen me. But God opened the door for me. What I want to get to is this. There were a number of times that I'd be awake at midnight in that hospital room. And I'd be thinking in my own mind, is this all my life is ever going to be from here on? Is this, is this what I've got to look forward to every year, every other year? I'm going to have to have a surgery and I'm going to have to go through all this. Is that all, is that all I've got to look forward to? God, I'm being real. God, how do I get up and move forward from here? How do I keep going, God? I'm tired. I don't care how much faith you got. You'll hit your wall sooner or later. 
I was tired. I was, and I remember the year specifically because our oldest granddaughter was born that year. I was lying in one hospital. She, her mama was over in the other hospital giving birth to our first grandchild, 2010. 2010. And uh, I, 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 I don't want to be ashamed of admitting this. I didn't pray, God, let me die, but I, I prayed, God, if it's my time, let me go on. <laughs> I'm just being real. Don't judge me. I'm just being real. I got there. God, this is it. Let me die. Well, as you can see, that was in 2010. Here it is, 2024. I'm still here, still preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And haven't had a surgery in over a decade now. But we all go through those moments where we struggle. Those moments of trying to figure, where am I, God? Where am I? Why is this happening to me? Don't you know there was a feeling of that in, in Elijah's life? I just saw God answer by fire, consume the sacrifices. I just saw all that. Can you not imagine him for just a moment? How did I get here? How do I go from there to here? I'm not trying to sound negative here, but if you've never experienced that, hang on to life. Because sooner or later, you're undoubtedly going to encounter a moment like that and I want you to hear me just like with Joseph and Elijah God had a plan for them God's got a plan for you amen so what I found out is through Christ I confront my crisis amen we can find hope in the midst of despair. Let's live out our faith in the midst of crises. Because in Christ, we are more than conquerors. In Christ, we are victorious. In Christ, we are never alone. Amen. Give me just a few more moments to get through this. And I want you to get this. I feel like I need to get through this. Not only do I confront my crisis in Christ, but I also, when I am in crisis, claim our Christ-given identity. Claim our Christ-given identity. It's in the midst of crisis we find our true identity. Listen, it's not an identity shaped by the world, but it's an identity given to us by Christ. This identity that Elijah Discovered under the broom tree. This identity we can claim today. Elijah's identity was not found in his circumstances. He was not defined by his fear. By his despair. By his desire to die. His identity was found in his relationship with God. He's a prophet. Of the most high. A man of God. A servant of the Lord. That's he, who he is. Not about what he does. It's about who he is. I am God called. I am God anointed. I am God appointed. Amen. He's a prophet. Man of God. A servant. That's his identity. His God given. Just like our Christ given. Identity. The first aspect of our Christ-given identity is this. And let me just get through these and I'll, I'll quit. The first aspect of our Christ-given identity is, first of all, we're loved by God. Wow. We are loved by God. Amen. It's not a love that's earned or deserved. It's a love that He has freely given us. It's an unconditional love, a love that's everlasting. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Listen, in the midst of his despair, Elijah experienced this love. He wasn't abandoned by God. He wasn't forsaken. He was loved. Amen. Look.
After he said, I am ready to die, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And look at what verse 5, again, it's not on the screen. It says, he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. And behold, he looked. There was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down. Woo! Again. Isn't that beautiful? That is be- That's God's love. Okay, Elijah, I see you. Come on. I'm not giving up on you. I love you. I love you. He was not abandoned. He was not forsaken. He's loved in the midst. Listen. In the midst of him not understanding, God loved him. The second aspect of our Christ-given identity is that we are called by God. Elijah was called by God to be a prophet, to speak God's truth, to confront evil uh, of his day. Guys, get this. We're called. We're called by God. We're called to be his children. I love that. We're called to be his children, to be his witnesses, to be his hands and feet in this world. That's our calling. That's our Christ-given identity. The Hebrew word for prophet in this passage is nabi. It comes from a root word that means to rubble forth, to bubble, I'm sorry, to bubble forth as from a fountain. It suggests the idea of being filled with the Spirit of God, of being so full of God's truth that it bubbles forth from us like a water from a fountain. Amen. Amen. Now, th- listen, that, that's a powerful image of our Christ-given idea. We're not just passive recipients of God's love and calling. We are active participants filled with His Spirit, bubbling forth with His truth. Amen. Same word, Nabi, is used in other passages in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Here again, we see the idea of being called and appointed by God, of being set apart for His purposes. That's our Christ-given identity. Writer of 1 Kings traditionally believed to be the prophet uh, Jeremiah was intimately familiar with the struggles and challenges of being a, a prophet. Remember, he wrote in Jeremiah 29, I will not mention His word or speak any more in His name. His word was in my heart like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. This passage echoes the experience of of Elijah under the broom tree. It reinforces the idea of our Christ-given identity. We're not identified by our circumstances. But by our relationship with God. We're His prophets, His witnesses, we're servants, we're His kids. One more, as we look at Elijah under the, prayer, under the broom tree, praise. It's enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. For a moment, Elijah loses sight of his Christ-given identity. And in that moment, he does feel that despair. He does feel that isolation. He does feel overwhelmed. But God has not abandoned him. God has not forsaken him. And God reminds him of his true identity. His God-given identity. Amen. Amen. He's a prophet of the Most High. A servant of the Lord. That's his identity. That's our identity. Have you ever been there, guys? Have you ever been there? Oh, I have. There are times, Ryan, I'm being really honest today. There are times that I've even questioned myself. God, are you really sure you called me to preach? I'm just being real. Are you sure, God? God said, yeah, I'm sure. I know what I'm doing. I didn't make a mistake. Continue to walk in me, trust in me, trust who I am in you. Amen. 
Praise God. Praise God. Ryan, would you come back for just a moment, please? I didn't get all the way through this today, and that's okay. I know our, our crowd is a little more intimate today, but at the same time, maybe somebody here today just says, Pastor, I just need that, that touch from God. I need maybe, man. Is there anybody else here? I'm, I don't know why. I'm just letting you in. Is there anybody else here? That has been that's struggling with just being able to rest. Just to be able to rest. Darla and I have tried different things, tried going to bed earlier. The moment we begin to get tired, we go to bed. Next thing I know, I'm waking up at one o'clock, I'm waking up at three o'clock. Waking up at four o'clock, wrestling with thoughts. When Elijah was real and open and honest with God, God visited him through an angel and he was able to rest. And when he rested, he was able to wake up, take nourishment, and go back and rest some more. You know, there are times when God uses you in such a particular way, powerful way, that when that moment of anointing lifts, and it does, that you're left in your humanity, and all of a sudden, you're just left exhausted. You know what that is, Harvey, when you've gone and you've preached and that anointing is on you and you just feel the fire of God. The wind of the Holy Spirit catches your sails. But all of a sudden, we don't live there. And all that lifts. God hasn't left, but that lifts. And we are left in our humanity. And we are exhausted. We're tired. There are times that I've gone home on a Sunday and Sunday afternoon and I'd say it out loud. Didn't think I was saying it out loud, but I did. I'd say, oh, I'm so tired. I'm shot. When you're under that anointing, man, there is just a force and a flow. But we don't always live there. Elijah had that great force and flow up there on that Mount Carmel but the next thing, the wind left the sails and is faced with the reality of his circumstances. And it began to take its toll. But he did do what he needed to do. He took it to the Lord in prayer. He prayed. Amen. I want to ask you today. Maybe that's where the Lord wants me to go with this message. I just want to ask you today. If you're tired and weary from life's experiences, maybe you just need that touch from God. Just that touch from God. I'm going to ask right now, as Ryan begins to lead this, if there's anybody here before we leave today that say, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm just ready. I've, I've been weary. I've been exhausted. I've been doing my best to keep my head above water. I just need to be able to get some rest. I don't know. That's kind of the direction I feel like the Lord's taking me right now. If you're here today, and that's you, and you would come to this all, I'd love the opportunity to pray with you before we leave this house. If it's not, that's fine. But for somebody here, Ryan, would you go ahead and lead us today for a moment? 
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, 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 let the key The anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. Oh, the anchor of my days, oh, he is my song. Is there anyone else today before we leave the house? Anyone else? Praise God. Thank you all for praying for my wife. I'm not going into any details, darling. I just want my wife needs a miracle. My wife needs a miracle. Really does right now needs a miracle. That's all I can say, but God. My wife needs a miracle. Amen. God is able. God is able. God is able. Praise God. To God be the glory. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I've watched Anna grow up in our church. I think about where Anna and Abby both are at with the Lord. 
Well, that's such a blessing. Annette and Brian, you need to be, I hope this is the right word, you need to be so proud. You need to be, we are. We are. Anna's getting ready to leave on a five-week mission trip this Wednesday, correct? This Wednesday. And uh, listen, we're going to anoint and pray for her today. But listen to me, please. Don't let this be the last time. Let Over these five weeks, let's keep lifting her and the team, the whole team, in our prayers. Amen. Going to Japan, I'm going to be over there ministering the love, mercy, and grace of God. Amen. Amen. I just want to say how proud we are of each and every one of you. The trip was $6,000, correct? And you, you, God helped raise that in three weeks. Three weeks. God help raise that. Somebody needs to praise God for that. But here's something else I'm excited about. Raise so much that it's helping others be able to go and be a part of that missionary. You got a young and giving her putting applause for that. She walking through the aisle going, not sure what I'm clapping my hands for, but everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to get involved. Praise God. Anna, would you and your family come up here, please, and let's uh, some of our church, just a, just some of our church family come and help me as we pray together. Praise God. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock at Washington Park, right, Brother Harvey? Tomorrow at 11 o'clock at Washington Park, right across from the library in Metropolis. Memorial Park. Memorial Park. Okay, I'm sorry. Memorial Park in Metropolis. They're going to be having a special uh, Memorial Day service. Brother Harvey's going to be speaking and sharing and uh, 
covering you with our prayers. Darling, I'll be out of town, but just know that our prayers are there with you. We're going to go see her mom and dad real quick. Uh, so just uh, know we are praying, and I want to make sure I announce that. Memorial Park, 11 o'clock tomorrow. Amen. And then don't forget, next Sunday evening, uh, Brookport Church of God on the road, we're going to go up to uh, Marion All Nations Church. Uh, like I said, we used to have those one-night uh, district revivals, and we're going to go up, and that's what it's going to, uh, to be. And so we're really looking forward. If you weren't going to go, even if you're not writing with us, please go ahead and sign the, the sheet out there. But that, uh, that way we just know to look for you and uh, whether you're coming or not. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry. No service tonight here. And again, no service next Sunday night. We'll be traveling up there for service up there. Thank you. No service tonight. Don't forget that. You know what? I know we've experienced a little adversity getting here today and a little unknown of what everything, how everything was going to play out. This has been a good day. Amen. Been a good day in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Let's keep praying. I do know that Anthony and Dee Dee are without power at their house. I know that uh, Jonathan and uh, Marianne are without power at their house. Or the last I heard, I haven't heard an update yet. But uh, trees down, power lines down, things like that in different areas. So just keep praying for our church family. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Any update on the summer camp? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Of encouragement. Praise God. How can we help? And again, see what the devil meant for evil. God yeah. meant it. God is going to turn that into good. Yeah. Just like we sang that song. Maybe Friday, but Sunday is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I tell you, I'm just, I'm just so thankful. So thankful. You know, I. And give God Amen. all the glory and Amen. all the praise because honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But I mean, and people just as hard, Brother Harvey, I see you. I know where you are. I see Rosemary. And they just give. Yeah. But it's just amazing. What God we need doing. to invest and pour into our children. Yeah. Yes. yes <coughs> because if we don't, the world is going to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's the right. The world's never going to stop trying to snatch them away. That's right. Amen. We need to cover our children. Amen. Amen. But I'm just grateful. And I just want to give God the glory and God the praise of his goodness. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Brother Harvey's going to be speaking this Wednesday night here and then next Sunday morning. What town's that in? Uh, Bethel Christian Church over in Kevel. Kevel. He's going to be speaking next Sunday morning and uh, Bethel Christian Church. Yes. Amen. Keep you in our prayers. Amen. Would you pray us out of here today, please? Father, again, we thank you for your goodness, Father. Your mercies that are fresh every day, Father. Lord, we ask and pray, Lord God, right now that you would keep on saving us. Help us, Lord God, to keep on keeping on, Father. You are the God of all peace, the God of all comfort. You are our joy, you are our source in all things, and we thank you, Father. We magnify.